Hello, and welcome to Vivork. I'm Brian Watrous. This is the 17th video in a 10-part video series in which we are exploring how to automate using the Realize Orchestrator. In the previous video, we saw how to do branching using a basic decision schema element. In this video, we are going to be uh, looking at a similar topic, except this time we're going to be talking about the custom decision schema element. Now, just like the previous video, in order to this video, I encourage you to download the package of examples which are available. If you take a look at the YouTube description down below, you can see a URL to get you there. Uh, if you haven't already seen the video, you might also want to take a look at video number 14, which talks about this package. But I'm going to assume that you've looked at the YouTube description down below, got the URL, got the package, installed the package, and are ready to see some demonstrations. So let's do that. Let's go into demo mode. As you can see, I'm once again in the VRO client. And in the previous video, we were looking at basic decisions. Uh, we saw a simple workflow that went one of two paths, depending upon whether the user said that the user was happy or unhappy. Now we're going to do something uh, based upon this in our discussion of a custom decision. So notice that these two workflows are similar. Uh, the new workflow that we're going to be creating has that same basic decision that we defined before, but we're going to add a custom decision to make this workflow even fancier. Now as a reminder, in the previous video when we saw the basic decision, we saw that the basic decisions test was based upon a single variable. In this case, it was a Boolean variable called are you happy, but it could be a single uh, string variable, it could be a single number variable, but with the basic decision, it has to be a single variable. On the other hand, with the custom decision, you can work with lots of variables. That's one of the things that makes custom decisions more powerful. Another thing that's different about basic versus custom decisions is that basic decisions do not allow you to type in and specify the JavaScript code that performs the test. On the other hand, custom actions allow you to type the code that defines the test. So let's take a look at uh, our workflow. Again, the, the uh, basic decision element that you he see here works exactly the same way I showed you in the previous video. If you haven't seen the previous video, go watch that video. But here we have a decision element. This time it's a custom decision. Let's uh, edit our workflow and take a look at it. So we edit the workflow and in here we will edit the workflow. Uh, the info tab works the same way as we've seen before, so I won't discuss that. But instead I'm going to jump to the end tab. Now the basic decision schema element does not have an end tab, but custom decision does. And the end tab for a custom decision, very much like for a scriptable task, the end tab allows you to bring variables in, allows you to do inward variable binding. In this particular example here, you can see that I have performed an inward bounding to a single variable called how happy. That one is an input parameter. If we went and looked at the inputs tab, we would see it's an input parameter, but I can see that right here. Uh, in this case, this variable is a number. And what we're going to do in the script portion of this custom decision is define how high or how low that number has to be for this custom decision to return true. Now, in this particular example, I only had one variable that I brought in, but I can bring in essentially as many input parameters and attributes as I need or want to just by clicking this button multiple times. Now, I'm not actually going to bring in any new variables at this point, but just to show you here, if I click the binding button, the same window that you've seen numerous times before in previous videos and your orchestrator work, befo uh, work before this, it's, it's the same, same window. You simply select which one or more variables you want to bring in, click the select button, and boom, you brought them in. And specifically, you have inward bindings for those variables. Now, to keep things simple in this example, I'm only going to bind to a single input parameter, but I could have bound to lots of input parameters and attributes if I wanted, but we'll keep it simple. One input parameter. Now, unlike a basic decision where the scripting tab is grayed out, here with the custom decision, the, the tab is ungrayed. We get to go to that tab and define exactly 
what the test is for uh, this custom decision. Now, in this particular case, uh, you can see up above some JavaScript code that tests the how happy input parameter against a hard-coded number, in this case, seven. And if how happy, the number the user supplies for how happy is greater than seven, then this JavaScript code is going to return true. Otherwise, or else, it's going to return false. When you write your JavaScript to define the test, you need to return true in one case and false in another case. So in this simple example here, if how happy is greater than seven, we'll return true, which means we'll go along the green path. On the other hand, if how happy is not greater than seven, we will return false from this JavaScript code and therefore the orchestrator workflow will go down the, the red failure path. Now you can also see down below here, let me actually uh, uncommon it, it here. Uh, using either one style or the other, you can define the return differently if you want. In fact, it's your code, you can define it however you want. But I just wanted to quickly illustrate to you here um, that you have some flexibility. For instance, this same code, this single line of code you see down here, does exactly the same things that you see going on up above. Same code, effect, it's just a different code. Uh, if you do choose the code style that you see down below, it is optional for you to put in these parentheses, but as a matter of good programming practice, I would argue that you really ought to put them in. It makes the, the code clear. So that's it. The, the rest of this works essentially the same way that you've seen the basic decision work. Um, with a custom decision, when you drag one of those in, you get a green path and a red path, and you can have uh, add schema elements such as these scriptable tasks or whatever you want on the either branch coming out of your custom decision. So in summary, uh, basic decision allows you to have one, in, uh, one variable that we're testing and you do not get to define the code. On the other hand, with the custom decision, you can bring in as many input parameters and attributes as you want, and you can define the JavaScript code however you see fit. Okay, so uh, in terms of our overall description of how a custom action, excuse me, a custom uh, decision script schema element works, um, that's it for the overview. If you'd like to jump ahead to the next video, video number 18 is just going to describe another type of decision element called a decision activity. Uh, on the other hand, if you'd like to stick around, I'm going to create this workflow from scratch. Actually, I lied. I'm not going to create it from scratch. I don't want to create the whole thing. Um, let me rename the, the workflow first of all. I'm not going to recreate the whole thing because we already have a workflow that does a good portion of what we're trying to do. There we go. So I've renamed the workflow. I already have a workflow that provides a, the core portion of what I'm trying to do. So rather than create this workflow from scratch, uh, I'm going to take this existing workflow because it's so similar to what we're trying to do. I'm going to duplicate the workflow. Uh, I'll call it how happy are you? And I'll just make certain I put it into the right folder. There it is. And that looks good. Okay, so again, I won't need to define this portion of the workflow because we've already done it. Uh, instead, I'm gonna go ahead and edit the workflow and we're gonna add another input parameter called how happy. And it's not going to be a string, it's going to be a you guessed it, a number. And let's type some description there. And we'll go to the schema tab. We're going to add in a custom decision. Let's put it here. And uh, again, it's going to have a couple different branches. Let me drag out a scriptable task. Let's see, this one here is going to be the, if the user is super happy, as opposed to over here, we'll log that they're really happy. And we would need to put in the appropriate code. You are super happy. 
as opposed to you are just really happy. Okay, so that's the easy part. The harder part comes in defining this custom decision and the tests that it performs. But we can do this. We'll start by hitting the pencil icon. And in here, um, the info tab, I don't really need to do anything here, so I'll go to the end tab. And again, by clicking this binding button, I can bring in whatever variables I want to bring in. Now, I could bring in, are you happy? But I don't need that in this schema, in this decision activity. Excuse me, it's not a decision activity, it's custom decision. Custom decision. I don't need this variable, I, I used it earlier. What I want in this case is the how happy variable, the number based variable. And over here in the scripting tab, all I have to do is define the code. Again, you saw earlier, I could say if some tests, blah, 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 then true, else false. But we'll just do the shorthand version here. We're going to say return whether how happy is greater than, again, the number here is seven is just arbitrary. But if the number is greater than seven, then this expression will return true. Otherwise, it'll return false. If it does return true, we're going to go down the green path. If it returns false, we'll go down the red path. Now, I could uh, scoot these two branches around to make it look exactly like the last one, but that's just making it pretty. Um, so, but as far as functionally setting up this workflow, we've done it. That's, that's all it takes. So again, you now know how to do two different types of decisions. One's a basic decision, the other's a custom decision. In both cases, the basic and custom decisions base their decision upon the value of one or more variables. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at another type of decision uh, schema element called a decision activity. And unlike these two previous decision constructs that we're looking at variables, with a decision activity, we're not going to test based on some value of some variable, but rather a decision activity calls out to another workflow and the test itself is based on the return value, specifically an output parameter of the workflow that we call. If that made sense, great. You can maybe even skip from video 19 altogether, but um, go ahead and join me over in video number 19. Uh, e even if you understood conceptually what I just described in decision activity to be, it's useful to, to see one of these decision activities be built into a workflow so that you can see the mechanics. So that's it for video number 18. Next up is video 19 decision activities. See you there.